It's time for CBJ in 30, presented by Tell Ohio Credit Union. Find us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, YouTube, and TuneIn. The easiest thing to do is tell Alexa or Siri to play CBJ in 30. Here's your host, Bob McGilligan. Welcome to a Monday mailbag edition of CBJ and 30 presented by Telhio Credit Union. The Blue Jackets had a three game winning streak intact with them when they arrived in Winnipeg on Friday afternoon. But after a couple of mistakes on Saturday night, they did not have that winning streak intact. They fell to the Winnipeg Jets by the score of four to three and now look to get a new streak going as they return home to Nationwide Arena for tonight's game against the Ottawa Senators. Before I get to the questions that you have sent to me at Bobby Mac Sports on Twitter, I want to tell you a little bit about Telhio Credit Union. Telhio Credit Union has been around since 1934. They've been a strong financial institution and they have served their members and the community by promoting financial accessibility through extraordinary service and innovative financial solutions. There are so many promises that Telhio makes to the members of their credit union, like providing outstanding member service with every transaction, offer honest and fair deals to every member every time, preserve and protect the privacy and confidentiality of all member financial records and transactions, and many, many more promises that they make to you when you become a member of Telhio Credit Union. If you want to find out more about all of that, you can do so by going online to telhio.org. Just surf around their site. You'll be able to find all of the information that you're looking for. If you can't find something, very easy to find out while you're online. Just click on the live chat button on the right-hand side of the screen. Or, or if you're out and about town, you can stop by any local Telhio Credit Union office. Telhio Credit Union is open to everyone in central and southwestern Ohio, and they are federally insured by NCUA. All right, let's talk about the pluses and the minuses of the Blue Jackets' loss in Winnipeg 4-3 to on Saturday night. And there were pluses. In fact, there were big pluses. All of the Blue Jackets' goals came on the power play. That's right, three power play goals. They hadn't done that since April of 2018. And... Two of the three power play goals came on the same power play. The Blue Jackets got a five on three, and they scored on both penalties, which at the time put them in the lead in the game. But it was a lead that they were unable to hold. And that is where the minuses come in. And that is where the source of many of the questions for today's show come in as well. Elvis Merzlikens made the start in Winnipeg. Of course, the young prospect goaltender just coming over from the Swiss League last year, a guy who had been talked about here for the last couple of years, that he was coming, that he was on his way. He showed up at the end of last season, didn't play in any games when he got here at the end of last season. That didn't come until this year. But Elvis went into the game on Saturday still looking for his first National Hockey League win. And the Blue Jackets got out to the early lead in the game. And then the Winnipeg Jets came back and tied the game. And then the Winnipeg Jets went up 2-1 to one in the game. And that's when the Blue Jackets came back with that 5-on-3 power play and scored on both ends and went up 3-2. to two. And then Merzlikens gave up another goal that tied the game. That was, uh, it, it was questionable at the time. When I watch Elvis play, I just see a guy that is still trying to adjust to the speed of the National Hockey League as compared to what he has been used to in the past. Um maybe angles, maybe he's guessing a little bit, maybe he's still not surveying the entire situation and figuring out what can be coming next, which is, you know, part of the job in the NHL. You've got to figure out what teams are going to do. You've got to figure out where they're going to shoot it from. You're going to figure, you have to look at it and figure out where there are more options for teams. And I thought that on that tying goal, he really didn't do that. I felt that he was assuming the shot was going to come from the boards. There was a little pass, and Matthew Perot put a shot that was not even a hard shot that floated by Merzlikens and made it a 3-3 game. But the play that stands out the most is right near the end of the game, in the last three minutes of the game, you're on the road, you're in a tie, you have a chance to get the point, and you just want to get that point. Somehow, some way, get the point, and just go home, have a point streak intact at the very worst, right? I mean, get to overtime. Get your point, get to overtime. Maybe you do win the game and get the second point. Maybe you go to a shootout and you get to the second point. But you've got to get there. And Elvis didn't get himself there. In fact, he put himself 
in a really bad spot. The puck comes in on him late in the game instead of trying to, if he's going to play it, instead of putting it back uh, behind the net or dumping it in a corner or whatever he could have done, he tried to put the puck right up the middle of the ice. And there were two Winnipeg defenders, or well, they were coming in on the forecheck, two players coming in on the forecheck. He got the puck past the first one, but he hit the second one with the puck. It comes off the body, falls on the stick. Now he's completely out of position trying to get back and make the save, and the Jets take the lead, and the Blue Jackets could not come back from that play. So, again, that is it's a devastating mistake, and I'm less upset about it now than I was at the time that it happened. I was just ups- just as upset as you are when it happened. Um, there was no reason for it to happen, quite frankly. But again, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy that is trying to make adjustments. He's obviously been a good puck mover in the past. I think that is a strength of his game. But I just think in the NHL, the decisions that you make have more dire consequences than they do in other leagues. And that is just a fact of life. There are things that you can do in some places that you cannot do in the National Hockey League. And if you're trying to, as they say, sauce a pass over everybody and maybe get it to a guy at the blue line to send your player back the other way, that is much more difficult to do in the NHL than it is to do in any other league in the world. And maybe he wasn't trying to do that. Maybe he was just trying to get it by the first guy and he never saw the second guy. Whatever the case, it happened it was uh, it was a tough break. It was a really tough break. I mean, his team went out there. They scored three goals. Uh, in the NHL, three goals can be enough to win. I thought the Blue Jackets were playing good enough team defense to win that game. But the mistakes that were made were, well, that one was a glaring mistake. And you only learn by doing, right? That's the, that's the saying. We learn by doing. But the problem is when your team that's trying to get itself together, figure out exactly what it is, and a team that desperately needs points, while you're learning, while you're doing, it's you know taking you out of position in this case to get a couple of points. So that's why it was very, very frustrating and understandably frustrating. And that's why I have an entire mailbox full of questions about this very situation today in this Monday mailbag segment. So let's get to it without further ado. And I'm just going to go through here and I'll, and I've already given you a lot of what I, well, I've given you my look at what happened on Saturday. Okay. So I'm going to read all of these questions and then I'll come back with an answer that hopefully addresses everything that I've read to you. I'm going to start with Scientific Goalie, who says the Elvis experiment after five starts with zero wins. Why on earth did we let a kid who never played on North American ice go straight to the NHL? All right, so that's one. Rob the Nerd says, Elvis does not seem ready for the NHL but doesn't want to go to Cleveland. What on earth do you do with him? I don't want to say it's too early to give up on him, but I think it's safe to say that fans overhyped him and he's probably at least a year away from being a backup. Uh, Donald Suppa. Goalies are notoriously slow to develop. Many spend years in the AHL and even the ECHL before they are NHL ready. I just don't understand why the Blue Jackets don't sign or trade for a veteran to back up Corpusalo and let Elvis develop in the minors. And let's see. I have a couple more here. And again, I just want to read them all and we'll go from there. Uh, The next one says it's from C straight. Would it be better for Elvis to spend some valuable time playing in the AHL in Cleveland? His mistake on the fourth goal in Winnipeg can't happen again. Maybe he was rushed from Europe to the NHL. And uh, Thomas Duffield has the last one. Why isn't Elvis spending as much time as Corpy did in Cleveland? All right. Now, these are all valid questions. There's no doubt about it. But here's what I find funny. And I'm not accusing this of any of you whose question that I just read. Okay? I'm not. I'm not accusing any of you of this. But this is, uh, this is what's funny to me. It's funny and it's appalling all at the same time. On Thursday last week, the Blue Jackets took on the Detroit Red Wings at Nationwide Arena. The Red Wings came into the game 
dead last in the Eastern Conference, a team that is in a very big rebuilding stage. They're not close to what they hope they're going to be in a couple of years, and everybody knew that. And Jonas Corposalo was announced as the starter on Thursday, and I saw social media comments, and this is why I don't live my life based upon what I see on social media, because if I did, well, I wouldn't have much of a life. But anyway... I saw a lot of comments on social media that were bemoaning the fact that Corpus was starting the game and not Elvis. Why isn't Elvis being given a chance? Why doesn't Elvis get to play games at home? I saw that one more than once. And you know what? I almost let social media get the best of me that day. It was very close because I wanted to send out a tweet that simply said, name your favorite football team. And if that football team has a strong starting quarterback, how many people worry about the playing time the backup quarterback is going to get? I know the answer to that question. The answer is zero. Now, if the starter is struggling, everybody loves the backup quarterback, right? I mean, the backup quarterback is the most popular guy in the building if the starter is struggling. And then if he gets in and starts to struggle, then everybody hates him, and why did he ever get into the game? And maybe making a football analogy is not a fair football or is not a fair analogy to make because football plays only once a week, whereas hockey three, four times a week. There are more opportunities, and it is more necessary to get your backup goaltender into the game to spell your starting goaltender. So I saw all of that on Thursday, and I I just – Look, let me just follow up on what I was just saying. Let me let me just uh, adjust it for the situation here, okay? When Sergei Bobrovsky was the starting goaltender for the Blue Jackets, hardly ever, hardly ever did I have people clamoring to me about when is Corpus Salo going to get the opportunity to make a start and when is he going to play an extended stretch. Now, maybe once in a while people would ask when he was going to make a start, but I'm telling you, it's not like this situation. And to me, it should be like this situation, and I'll tell you why. Because Jonas Corposalo, without question, has nailed down the spot as the number one goaltender on this team. He is the man right now. So I'll tell you what I worry about when it comes to Elvis playing. Nothing. I worry about what's going to happen when he does play, but I, I don't worry about when he's going to play because Corposalo is the number one guy. He has been in the minors. He has been the backup here for three years. As one of those questions alluded to, you know, why don't they do with Elvis what they did with Corposalo, whereas uh, Corpy was going down and playing games when there was going to be a three-week stretch before he got a chance to play again in the NHL? Again, a legitimate question, but Corposalo has paid his dues. He's gone through all of that. And if you pay your dues and then you don't perform, then I'm not going to sit here and and defend and say, well, because you paid your dues, even though you're not getting the job done at the highest level, then you should get to go out there night after night after night if there's another option. But here's the bottom line. This guy's playing like a number one goaltender in the NHL. And he's doing fine. He's doing great, as a matter of fact. You know, I wondered if he would be able to handle that job on an everyday basis. I shouldn't say I wondered. I wondered if he would be able to take it early in the year and make that adjustment and be the everyday guy. I I thought he could do it. I just thought it might take him a little bit longer to do it since there were, you know, so few opportunities, it seems, in the last couple of years for him to play in an extended stretch. But I have been very pleasantly surprised with Corpus Allo and, and what he has done and how he has done it. And now that the team is starting to score some goals, that makes his job much easier. Look what happened on Thursday. I mean, he gave up four goals, but they scored five. So when he gets that goal support, I think he's going to be just fine. And he's been fine in the games that have been two-to-one games, quite honestly. So when it comes to him, he's the clear-cut number one. And there's no question about it. Now with Elvis, you know, he came over here last year, as I said, he didn't have to go to Cleveland. And again, 
I don't want to say this kid did anything wrong because he didn't. Uh, the contract that he was able to work out was has been completely within the rules of the NHL. He's done exactly what he is allowed to do. Um, he, you know, he obviously doesn't want to go to Cleveland. He did go there for that one game, so I don't want to sit here and say that he is uh, absolutely not going to go there and and all. He did go there, and he would have stayed there longer had Corpusalo not had the temper tantrum and got himself taken out of the start in Montreal. Okay, so let's be fair. Let's be fair. He did go down to Cleveland. Now, maybe when he came over here, he felt that he was older, he had a lot of experience, and maybe he didn't feel that the American Hockey League was something that he had to experience in order to be a good National Hockey League goalie. Okay? And that's fair. That's all within what goes on. And... He didn't have to go down there. They they let him just, uh, you know, come here, work with Manny Legacy last year and not go to the minors. And he made his, his adjustments that way. Came into training camp, went through the training camp, got the opportunity to play preseason games. You know, you could see that there were going to be uh, some hurdles to clear there. There's no doubt about that. We saw it then. We're seeing it now. He has gotten better. But what he did on Saturday, again, shows you that he's still making adjustments to the league. All right? but it, it, And it is frustrating. And it's frustrating for you. It's frustrating for me. And you know it's got to be frustrating for this young man who now has had his confidence shaken. And he's a guy that we've been told for years has great confidence. And I'll tell you something, and this is what I think personally, I think that – He has been made out to be – I think the stories that were written about him for the years prior to his arrival here uh, started to build up his legend and his lore, if you will. And I think that now he comes over – and he was a superstar in Switzerland, an absolute superstar when he played there in the Swiss League. And I can understand why he thinks that I've got this all figured out. And now he comes, and he doesn't have it all figured out. Now there are these huge expectations that have been created for years. And I feel sorry for him because of that, quite frankly. I feel sorry for a guy who comes in and has all of these worldly expectations because, you know, there's there's been big things written about him. There's been all this talk about him. Uh, look, the organization themselves said that he is the best goaltender not in the National Hockey League. And they could still be right on that. But at this point in the National Hockey League, he is struggling to find his way, as Torts would say. He's struggling to find himself. He's struggling to find his game. Now, he did go to Cleveland before. He may go to Cleveland again. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But I can tell you this. When he goes out there time after time, even though he gets better, when the result is still a loss, that is making it tougher to get even more time. Now, look at this week. There's games tonight, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So he's got to play a game this week, one would think. And you'd love to send him to Cleveland and have him play and have somebody to bring up from there. But when they did that a couple of weeks ago, Matisse Kivlenix is the player that came up to back up Corpusalo. And even though he's put up solid numbers there in Cleveland this year, he hasn't played in the NHL. And if you were to bring up the other guy, Vaney Vevelainen, he too has played no games in the NHL. So as somebody said, why don't they just go out and get an experienced backup for Corpus Allo and let Elvis go to Cleveland? Well, there's a couple of things with that. First of all, we talked about this maybe a week ago or two weeks ago perhaps. Uh, who can you go get? Now, Corey Schneider got put on waivers this past week from the New Jersey Devils. And Corey Schneider is a big-name guy and one that you look at it and you say, oh, man, there you go. There's the answer to your question or your problem. There's the answer. Is it? I mean, New Jersey is sending him out because he's not good enough to play for New Jersey, who is, you know, right there, if not worse than the Blue Jackets in the division. So there's obviously a problem there. And then you go a little bit further and you dig into the contract and you see how much money that guy makes per year. And I think he has three years left on his deal. And that would be a heck of a lot of money 
to have to assume for a guy that has been a good NHL goalie but in the last couple of years has tailed off and now has tailed off considerably. So other than that, where are you going to get this experienced NHL goalie that is spoken of? Who is willing to deal a good goalie, especially knowing that you are in desperate need of that goalie? And maybe that's maybe they're not in desperate need, but if they were going to go that direction, I think that teams would try to take advantage because they know that you absolutely positively need that. They'll try to jack up the price as much as they could. So not having an experienced guy in the system, look, we knew that this was going to be uh, something it was either going to work out fantastic or it was going to be okay or it could be disastrous. And I don't think it's disastrous right now, but it is, it, it's, not in the, it's not in the great category as I speak to you at this moment. That's just the honest truth, okay? So you've got a guy with great talent. He's trying to figure things out. I do believe his confidence has been shaken. Um, I can't speak for him. I can't say it's extremely shaken, but I, I just see I, – there are times that I feel that I can see him thinking. And at that position in this league, you can't think. You have to react. You have to know. You just have to know. If – on that third goal, if you're down on the ice and you just can't think that the puck is going to come off the half wall there, that that's where the shot's going to come from, even though you have traffic in front of you. You have to be able to recognize that there's a guy a few feet to the left and he's going to be able to have a shot inside the far post and the pass is probably going to go there. And and those are just things that you learn by by doing, as I said earlier, you learn by doing. And it is, it's just tough. And I've now talked about this for how long? I'm trying to answer your questions on it. And you can hear where I'm, I'm kind of going round and round because that's how confusing this is, what to do from here. Now, if Elvis could just get that win, I, I think he would be like uh, some of these goal scorers. Just get one, and then you can get your confidence back, and then you can go about getting more. But you've got to get the one first. And if there's an opportunity to get him back down to Cleveland, the one thing he did say in Montreal after he made that start against the Canadians, he did say that going to Cleveland was good because the game moved a little bit more slowly and that he was able to work on some things. And that's true. It does work more slowly in the American Hockey League. But, but the other thing is the American Hockey League is a bit of a scramble where guys are not in the positions that they will be in the NHL because everybody's trying to impress somebody. So it's more of a muddled mess in the AHL. It's still great experience. Uh, still being on that North American-sized ice in the AHL, I think, would benefit Elvis Uh But there, but it's not, it's not exactly the same as the NHL. It is more of a scramble. But there is an opportunity to learn. So we'll watch here over the course of the next uh, couple of days, couple of weeks, and see if they find some opportunities for Elvis to go down there and play. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do. All right, let's uh, move on here. Lauren has the next question. How do you feel that Nick Felino played after being out for three games? Um, Nick was okay. I, I thought he was better on Thursday than he was on Saturday. I thought he struggled on Saturday. I thought his line struggled with Texier and Atkinson. I thought as good as Cam was on Thursday, he went back to struggling on Saturday, and, and it was all three of them. And I think that with Texier on that line, that's a, another thing. Now they're starting to put him at center. You know, they're trying to learn on the job here, and that is just not – it's just not easy to learn on the job all the time. It's really not. So – um, I thought Nick was okay, but, uh, again, I thought he was better on Thursday than he was on Saturday. We'll see if uh, John Tortorella makes any lineup changes tonight. Jason Messick says the narrative of Milano Benstrom, uh, the narrative, let me try again, the narrative of Milano Benstrom, et cetera, not getting enough ice from many fans is tiresome. I'm of the philosophy, I'm of the philosophy, score against the third and fourth liner you are playing against and earn more time on ice. Your thoughts, please. Well, Jason, my thoughts are your thoughts. I, I think you're right. I think it's good. 
I think the Milano, Bemstrom, and Dubois line worked for a little bit. I thought it was going to be a challenge in Winnipeg on Saturday because uh, the Jets had the last change, and I asked John Tortorella about it pregame. Were you concerned about that, you know, being a matchup problem for you? And he said no, but uh, I think it was. And I think by the end of the game, you know, Milano didn't have much ice time, and Bemstrom, you know, his ice time is starting to dwindle again. I think you're absolutely right. Whatever line you're put on, you've got to perform. You know, and, and look what we're talking about here. We're clamoring for one guy who's never played in the league to get a lot more ice time because, again, you know, we've heard all summer that, you know, he is a guy that might be able to do some things. He's not ready to do them all yet. And he's having some flashes here, and that's great. But th th this takes time, and it takes more than 20-plus games. It takes a while. Texier is still making the adjustments. I mean, he was great last year when he came in, but there are still many adjustments to be made, and they are learning on the fly. And that includes Milano, even though he's had a season where he had 14 goals here. He's still learning on the fly. Finally, Cameron Maynard says, the power play is starting to get hot. I have to think the credit goes to Paul McClain and his recent hiring, but the players in the execution can't be ignored either. A lot of faster puck movement and better plays are being drawn up too. In your opinion, who or what gets the credit? Okay, well, it's a couple of things. First of all, I think they have just started to relax and figure it out and simplify. And Paul McClain has told them to simplify. I think they're listening. It's that, as Tortorella described it, a new voice type of a thing. But, look, this guy hasn't done much with that power play. Let's be real here. You know, his first day was on the bench for the game in Detroit. There was no practice on Friday. He was at a morning skate on Saturday, and they scored three goals on the power play Saturday night. He hasn't tinkered with this thing yet at all. Well, I shouldn't say at all. He hasn't gotten really into it. Pierre-Luc Dubois did say over the uh, or after the game that one thing that McLean talked to them about was certain points that he wanted them on the ice during the power play, and that's made a difference, apparently. that's Those were du uh, Dubois' words after the game on Saturday. But I think the faster puck passing and movement, that's just confidence. And that's happening no matter who runs the power play. Uh, you can have Scotty Bowman come in and drop the power play, and if they don't have the confidence they can do anything with it, nothing's going to happen with it. I'll tell you that. So I think Paul McClain is going to be a, a positive factor there, Cameron. I'm not, I'm not just saying that, you know, he has had nothing to do with it, but the systems themselves are the same. It's just that now they're starting to believe that they can score on the power play. Again, belief is a funny thing. Confidence is a funny thing. But to be honest with you, sometimes it's just not that funny at all. Thank you for your uh, questions. As always, I love doing this on Mondays, uh, talking with you, answering your questions, seeing what's on your mind in the Monday Mailbag Edition of CBJ and 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. You can send me your questions whenever you want on Twitter at Bobby Mac Sports. The Ottawa Senators are in town tonight. Ottawa a team that uh, bottomed out last year. They made a lot of trades. They're rebuilding. There's no secret about that. They come into this game with a record of 11-11-1. Anthony Duclair, an old uh, friendly face, is a guy that's uh, having a good season for uh, the Ottawa Senators. So it'll be uh, fun to watch him, see him back in the building. He's got four goals in his last five games. Um, he also has six points in his last five games, too. So he's been kind of the uh, offensive powerhouse for the Ottawa Senators. So it'll be good to see Duke back in the building tonight. I know many of you are still unhappy that he's not wearing a Blue Jackets uniform. And, you know, to some extent, you're right, especially when you see how that trade went down. But, look, when you make that deal, you don't have any idea that it was going to fizzle like it wound up doing and that Ryan Dezingle just wouldn't be a fit here and would move on at the end of the year. Anyway, game time tonight is 7 o'clock. You'll be able to hear all of the action beginning at 6.30 with pregame coverage on the Blue Jackets radio network, which includes the flagship station 97.1 The Fan here in Columbus. You can also get the game on your Blue Jackets app. You can find it at bluejackets.com and on Sirius XM radio tonight. It'll be streaming on XM channel 928. Again, it's the Blue Jackets and the Ottawa Senators meeting for the first time this year tonight at Nationwide Arena. Until then, I'm Bob McElligot saying so long.